Welcome to this uh, mini video course on how to learn uh, coding with Python. Um, my name is Dave Tromp. Um, I have a website at davetromp.net where I write about uh, coding and trading, two of the things I do. And this mini course will be um, about learning you how to code if you have never coded before using the Python programming language. Um, you see here the website of python.org. Um, so <clears throat> why do I want to, uh, why did I decide to, to make this course? Well, I believe that anyone should learn how to code because coding and computation is all around us in, in this uh, modern day and age and um, if you know how to code you will understand the world better um, what will you learn if you follow my mini course you will uh, learn the basic principles of programming uh, using the python programming language um, i intended it first to be focused on um, on traders who want to learn how to code but uh, I've decided that it's a bit of a, a narrow uh, point of view. So um, it will be not too much focused on uh, traders, but on anyone who is interested in learning how to code. For instance, I have many, um, or many, I have had many colleagues, um, uh, like uh, product owners or uh, managers, um, in the software development business who do not know how to code and um, many a times they, they wonder uh, how do these guys do this, uh, these, these developers like I am. Um, so for these people it's very useful to, uh, to understand at least the basics of programming even if you have no intent to, to become a programmer. It's still very useful to, to understand how um, a program is built, how it's run, um, so you can have a better discussion with uh, uh, software developers. But also, if you ha have nothing to do with uh, software development, um, programming is everywhere. It's in your television, it's in your telephone, uh, it's in the banking system. So if you understand how um, this all comes together uh, to work uh, for you uh, by knowing how to program you will understand the world better so um, what do I expect that you know of programming N well nothing uh, you sh uh, so the prerequisite sits for this mini course is that you have no coding skills if you have some coding skills great um, you will still learn uh, something uh, I think um you do it it is well it is a prerequisite prerequisite that you um know something about computers you at least know uh, a bit more than just web browsing maybe you're very good at using excel or powerpoint or things like this so at least you know um how to get around the the file system and uh, and the computer itself if this is problematic, then first you should uh, see if you can uh, can focus on learning these skills first. Um, Python has two types of uh, t two versions. Uh, there's the two point X version and the three point X version. Uh, we'll be using uh, the uh, Python three point X version. The current version is three point six. Uh, so if you go to um, python.org then you will see here downloads and then you will see python 3.6.0 and python 3.7.13 um, you should download the uh, 3.6.0 and install it on your system um, python is uh, cross-platform available so it's available for windows uh, Mac, oh, yes. Uh, so you can download here the latest release. If you just go there and uh, download the latest, let me see. Um, 
down here at the files you can see uh, bum, 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 bum. you will probably want the executable installer uh, this one for Windows just click on it it will download an exe file and uh, if you uh, click on it uh, then it will open and start uh, the installer um, I'm working on uh, Ubuntu Linux so I cannot show you here on my computer I will see if I can make a small demo of how to install it on Windows because still most people are working on the Windows based system If you have Mac OS X, you can download uh, this installer and then you are good to go as well. Um, once installed, you will have um, uh, a Python um, engine that can run on the command line, but you also have what, what's called uh, idle, that's the uh, uh, IDE of Python, that will look something like this. And here you can uh, type all kinds of commands, and we will get into this uh, later. Um, so if you have this installed already, great. Uh, if not, uh, go to python.org and then go to downloads. If you are on a Windows machine, the download button here will uh, immediately give you the uh, Windows installer. And if you're on Mac OS X, it will immediately give you the... Um, Mac OS X installer. So you see here is the um, Atom uh, IDE. It's a uh, text editor that I will be using uh, uh, also next to Idle. Um, and um, you can get it uh, if you want to have the same setup as I have uh, by going to www.atom.io. <coughs> I will show you the website. There we go. And then uh, at the first page, the home page, you will see a uh, download button as well. And again, if you're on a Windows machine, you will be uh, offered a Windows executable to install. <coughs> and if you're on Mac OS X, you will get an image for uh, installing it on uh, Mac OS X. And as I'm on Ubuntu, I'm offered a uh, .deb file. So... Um, so what I suggest you do now, if you want to follow me along in the next uh, videos, is to go to www.python.org and install Python, and go to www.atom.io and install the Atom editor. Um, if you want to see a video on how to install Atom um, on Ubuntu, I have a video uh, uh, made about this and. Uh, I will link this in the comments below. Um, well, that's it for now. Um, and um, I will see you in the next video where we will start the mini course. Great, so you've decided to continue with this uh, mini course and start to learn uh, something about programming. Uh, congratulations, uh, that's a wonderful decision. Uh, I've made this decision maybe about 10 years ago when I was working with um, uh, as a pro uh, project manager uh, on some software pr uh, projects and I was working with 
developers and I was really wondering how these uh, mostly guys were doing this <coughs> and um, I got hooked and uh, taught myself how to program using the Python programming language and uh, you're about to do the same and that's great so <coughs> this is lesson number one and um, in this lesson I will um, talk about some basics of, um, of programming the basics of uh, the paradigms that we have in programming or some of them there are many more but the most uh, important ones and you will uh, see how you can write your first uh, Python program yourself um, so um, mostly uh, Python is uh, programming in Python is uh, what we will be doing here is all about scripting we, we will be writing instructions for the computer to execute um, in a linear fashion so we will say to the computer first do this then do this then do this um, that's what we call or what I call scripting um, as I've written here and that's <coughs> that's the most we will do uh, that is what we will mostly do um, uh, if we want to take it a step further we can do some procedural programming um, that means that we will uh, write some functions that we can execute later and that we can reuse uh, so we will have a more structured way uh, of, of working um, and then we will also briefly touch on object-oriented programming because um, uh, Python uh, is also an object-oriented programming language um, it can be used as a scripting or procedural language but also object-oriented um, and many of the um, standard library functions uh, so the, the functions that are already available in the Python programming language use this paradigm this object-oriented paradigm and then there's also functional programming um, there's a lot to do about this lately it's becoming very popular uh, but we will not touch on this but I did want to mention it here so you have kind of a full scope of uh, the most important thing uh, paradigms that are available um, so if you want to write your first program it's um, standard um, in the programming world to uh, write a hello world example so that's just making the program uh, output the hello world message to the console so that's in Python 3 easily done by just writing print which means print to the console open a bracket and then between uh, single quotes or double quotes in this case I use double quotes write hello world and then close the quotes so if I run this um, it will uh, output hello world to the console uh, so I will execute it right now there you go and then it says hello world so that's the first program you can write if you just started to learn how to program um, as you can see <coughs> I've run this uh, within the atom editor so I've written my script on the left side and on the right side um, the console pops up within the atom editor um, I've used a plugin f uh, for Atom to do this. Um, it's the script runner uh, plugin. Let's briefly go uh, into how you could set this up. If you go to the settings, or let me see. Um, usually, I just uh, use a command, uh, no control comma and then it opens the settings uh, page and then if you go to install and then you search here for script run scripts enter and then uh, uh, there's this uh, package the script package and what I'm currently using is script runner and you, uh, I've already installed it, but you can 
if you uh, have not installed it yet you will see a button like this and you can install it and then if you use the alt x key it will run the console and run the program or the script that you are currently in so if i do this again i'll close this out i'm in this script hello world dot pi and i do uh, alt x then it will run it so um, <clears throat> let's do this uh, from scratch scratch in a in in the idle um, uh, editor because that's another way to do it so if you open the idle editor then you have the console and here you can um, start typing things like hello oh, hello world and that will give an error syntax error because um, you have to give a, a command here so if you write print as we done in the scripted file print and then write hello world exclamation mark closing the, uh, the quotes and the brackets and then enter it will put out on the console hello oh, world <laughs> so I made a typo there but that's not too important um, then another way to execute this is to put it in a file like I've done in the uh, atom editor so let's uh, see how you can do this so on the um, left top you have the, the menu and you go to file and then you uh, do new file it will open a editor so you can simply write here what you've just written print hello world oh I've got the quotes don't forget the quotes yes and then you can do file you can do save and you can just save it uh, anywhere you like let's just call it hello and it will get the extension py need the extension py so it can be identified as a python program now if you press the f5 button it will execute this program and run it so as you can see here it has run the hello.py file and it prints out hello world let me just put it so <clears throat> this is your first program uh, printing out hello world uh, to the console it's uh, nothing much you might say but it's it's the first step in learning how to program and um, in the next video we will go into how uh, what you can do with text and working with text because python is very useful for working with uh, text uh, and uh, we will have a look at how this works and what's possible so hope to see you in the next video and uh, hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below and give a thumbs up if you uh, like this uh, series of videos thanks welcome to lesson two in learn how to code with python um, i've decided to um, take a step back and uh, do it a bit slower and only use the um, idle uh, shell for now uh, because i think it's um, in the last video it was a bit well not messy but maybe making it overly complex to show you two editors and um, so you have to get a hand uh, a handle on that as well so let's just work with the um, idle uh, shell for now um, and then uh, when the scripts get longer uh, you will see that it's uh, useful to start working with a with a text editor or an IDE um, but for now just let's focus on um, idle the Python console and uh, start learning some programming so this lesson I will um, show you how you can work with text in Python so you've already seen how you can print out some text um, using the print function but in the shell you can 
also type in a string uh, which is text which are characters uh, next to each other um, and have it uh, outputted so we can do again the hello world example you, you can see that I'm putting it in quotes double quotes and if I press enter it will output it with single quotes if I excuse me if I do it in single quotes hello world it will give the same output so apparently Python um, understands that if you put something in double quotes or single quotes it to be text even if it's uh, a number for instance so if you put uh, the number one in um, double quotes it will give back a uh, string one why I know it's a string because it's outputted back in the console uh, with uh, single quotes if I would simply uh, do one and press enter then it will output a number on the console, an integer in this case. Um, so um, um, we've already seen the print function, so we could print out um, some long, long text. Uh, hello world, how, oh, how are you? And this will print out the text. You can see the difference here. There are no uh, quotes um, around the the text that's uh, put uh, to into the console um, because we are using the print function. So we're giving the uh, order to the Python interpreter to output a string. Uh, just as you would read it and uh, without the quotes. Um, so what can we do with um, strings? Well, many things. Um, first of all, um, we can look something up in a string. We can see if a um, string is in a string. Um, so we can do something like hello world how are you this string and uh, python offers the find um, method so you can say find and then you can uh, well look for something in it another string enter and it returns six so what does this mean um, it means that um, world has been found in the string hello world how are you at position 6 so this is the first letter 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then after that we have the uh, the, the uh, set of string and the the string that we uh, uh, try to find so um, <coughs> what else can I say about this um, interesting to know is that uh, it found it on the sixth position while actually the W is on the seventh position that's because strings uh, are counted from zero so the H is on position zero the E is on position one L is on position 2 etc etc so the W here is on uh, position 6 then let's see what else can we do we can replace strings so uh, let's say we want to replace world by another word so we can use the replace function so we want to replace world with something else 
we can say hello Dave how are you so the first parameter that we give to the replace function is world that's what we are looking for and then we are replacing it by Dave so this is a simple uh, find and replace function so if you press enter it gives back hello Dave how are you um, let's see what happens if uh, the string cannot be found so hello um, Maria how are you Maria is not in the string it uh, just leaves it as is so um, in the replace function will look uh, if it can find the um, the first string and then replace uh, it with the next um, let's see how this works if we um, look for something that cannot be found with the find function so we go back to the find function and we look for Maria in the string well what do you guess what will it give back will it give an error well let's see hey it gives minus one so if the find function does not find the string you are looking for in another string it gives minus one so you could use this in a script uh, for instance you want to see if um, uh, a whole text contains um, commas you can look for the commas and uh, if the find function returns minus one you know there are no commas in the text um, what else we can also um, change the, the the casing of the letters of the sentence by using uh, lower or upper functions so let's say we want to um, down case the, uh, the the sentence that we have we could use the lower function and as you see uh, it's all lower case now in the same way we can use the upper function to have it all in upper casing yes this is particularly handy if you uh, want to look for um, something in a text uh, but you don't know if it's uh, in upper or lower uh, casing so let's say we want to find world in this sentence and uh, but we don't know if world has been capitalized uh, or not so we could simply uh, make it to lower like so yes and then immediately after it find oh, find in lower cases world and then it should f uh, find it so it it transforms um, the whole sentence into lowercase so world will also be in lowercase and then we start looking for world and then it should find it so let's see if this is still true yes it returns six um, so this is <coughs> how to look for things in uh, a long string of text um, you can also add uh, other things easily to a text using the format function so let's say um, again we have the hello world example how are you um, but instead of world we want to add um, something here we can use the format function which is a very handy function um, so at the place where we want to add something we will use curly brackets like so so hello something how are you and this something the curly brackets will be replaced by the something that we add to the format function so here at format we put another string like um, Pete just say name so hello Pete how are you enter hello Pete how are you 
same way we can use Maria again how are you um, also instead of only one uh, replacement we can use um, many more replacements so hello Maria how are you but we can also hello Maria and someone else how are you so we can say uh, hello Maria and Dave how are you so hello Maria and Dave how are you um, to combine this with the print function for instance uh, we can say print this out pr by using the print function print and we have to close the uh, closing brackets here enter and it prints out hello Maria and Dave how are you um, another very useful function is the uh, or is it the function it's a method actually <laughs> doesn't matter um, operation we can do is the split operation on the text so we can take this text again so we have hello Maria and Dave how are you and we have a comma here and we want to split this sentence into two parts into two parts uh, and we want to split it on the comma we can use the split function and we will split on the comma enter and then you see um, <coughs> the sentence has been split up in two what we call um, two elements of a list and uh, we will get into this later uh, but this is how you can split text into two parts and you can uh, show only the first part by uh, enter, um, by accessing the uh, first element by using the this um, this way of writing so the um, brackets uh, with a zero that's the uh, first uh, element and the uh, second element is uh, number one so here hello Maria and Dave so if you want to uh, access the uh, second one we press N one here and then how are you okay so this is the base these are some basic examples of how you can work with text I uh, hope you found this useful and um, in the next lesson we will uh, look at how we can work with numbers in Python. Okay, thank you for watching and uh, hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it so I know. And uh, see you in the next video. Okay, welcome to lesson number three, working with numbers uh, in Python. So, um, numbers, well we've just looked at uh, Lesson number two, we, uh, we looked at strings and what you can do with strings and uh, how, are they, how they are being processed um, in Python. Now we will be looking at how numbers work in Python. So um, basically there are two types of numbers in, um, in general. So there are the, uh, what we would call whole numbers like one or five and decimal numbers like 1.2 or 3.4 um, so these these are different numbers and these are different treated differently in in python so uh, whole numbers uh, are called integers in in many program languages and in um, the python program language they are called int for integer and they are and the decimal numbers are called floating point numbers uh, or float for short so 
<coughs> this difference uh, has some uh, uh, implications when doing multiplications and additions, uh, etc. In, in Python. So let's look at this. So if we do one, oh, sorry, one plus two, one plus two equals three, and it returns, as you can see, an integer. If you want to know uh, what is the exact type that's being returned, you can ask for the type. So you, by uh, actually typing type and then doing one plus two, and then it returns class int. So you know that the result is an integer. Um, <coughs> so what will happen if we uh, add a float to an integer? So let's say we do one plus 2.3. Let's see. That returns 3.3, .3, which should be a uh, float. Let's see if that's correct. So type 1 plus 2.3. That should return a float. Class float. Yes, that's correct. Um, but this also, so th so then the the result uh, is cast as we call it to a float when one of the uh, uh, numbers uh, is a float, um, and this also happens if the um, one of the numbers is a float which is a round number. So let's say we do one plus two point zero. So, which is a round number, but it we the notation we use is a float. If we press enter, I expect it to return 3.0. Yes, 3.0, and that's float. <coughs> so, um, in some programming languages, you uh, specifically have to um, give the um, the type that you want uh, for the numbers uh, and also for the return value. Um, but in Python it's being inferred so if you say one integer plus 2.0 which is a float then Python will uh, automatically infer that it's uh, that one um, number is a float and then the result will also be a float um, <coughs> So um, this is also true for uh, other uh, operations like, um, let's say, multiplication. So let's do 1 times 2.0 returns 2.0, while 1 times 2 returns 2 as an integer. Same is for division, but that's uh, a little bit more tricky, as we can see. So if we do 1 divided by Two. Let's see what this returns. This returns a float. So from two integers, um, the return value can be a float. Uh, let's check if it's uh, actually float. I know it's float, but let's just be clear about it. Divided by two. Yes, that's a float. So <coughs> if we don't want to have a float returned, um, we can use uh, some functions uh, like the round function so we can say we want um, thousand divided by 33 that's uh, 30 point uh, 30 30 30 something um, but we just want to have the rounded value in this case that would be 30 we can use the round function round 1000 divided divided by 33 and that should return 30 and in this case uh, an integer uh, has been returned so let's check for that type yes that's an integer so what if we would want to have a float returned? Well, we could uh, have this returned simply by making one of the uh, numbers a float, like this one. 
Mm, no, not true. Sorry. Oh, yes, of course. The round function, um, as it's a rounding function, uh, only returns uh, integers. Um, so, uh, yeah, what's the point of making <laughs> it float? Um, so, if you really would want to force um, the, the result to be a float, you could use uh, what we call casting. We could cast the integer that's being returned by the round function we could cast it to a float so we could do this float and then it would return a float so that would be something like if we want the integer number one to become a float instead of an integer we could do this the other way around if we have a float and we want it to be an integer we can also um, do this by using the int and then 0 0.0, 0 1.0, and that would return 0 as an uh, 1 as an integer. <coughs> so we can move from float uh, to int and from int to float. Uh, you have to be careful because if you have uh, a float that's uh, 1, uh, 1.5, for instance, and you cast it to an int, then you will lose some you will lose the decimals so uh, 1.5 will become 1 um, also uh, 1.7 for instance will also become 1 so you will just lose everything behind the decimal if you would uh, want 1.7 to be um, an integer uh, that's rounded up so 1.7 becomes 2 then you should use the round function again 1.7 okay so this is going back and forth between um, uh, the data and the types of, uh, of the numbers um, what else there to know um, uh, yes uh, of course divi division by 0 is not possible so if you divide 10 by 0 uh, it will return an arrow, and that's called the zero division error, um, which is sometimes very useful to use. Um, let's see. Um, yes, <coughs> powers. How to use powers in Python? Um, let's say two. Um, two times two. So the oh, two times two. So the, the 2 to the power 2 is 4, is the same as 2 to the power, that's double star 2. Um, just to make this more clear, 2 to the power 3, that should be 8, that's this. 2 to the power uh, 4, that's 16. Uh, and in the same way, uh, we could take the square root. Um, because the square root is nothing more than let's say a square root of 16 is to the power 0 0.5 and as you can see here uh, if you take the square root like this um, you will uh, have a uh, float returned so in this case you could cast this to an int just to get a integer for uh, back um, let's see one more thing that's um, uh, already interesting to know you can sum up a a group of uh, numbers let's say you have one uh, and two and you have a three and a four yes <clears throat> and you want to have these summed up um, that can be done using the sum function and then you have to put them in uh, square brackets as well one two three four and it sums them up and that's ten 
All right. Um, one more thing. Um, you can combine uh, numbers um, with strings using the format um, function again. And that's something I would like to show. Um, so let's say you want to say, I have so many apples. You, and then format. And then you can say, I have 10 apples. Enter. And as you can see, the 10 that has been, uh, that's an integer in the format function has been cast to a string automatically by the format function. So you don't have to, uh, you can, but you don't have to enter the 10 here as a string. That's not necessary. It will work, but you don't have to. The format function does it. That was something uh, I would like to show you still, uh, and that makes the connection to the working with text. Um, so these are the basic things you need to know uh, with when working with uh, numbers um, that I can think of right now on the top of my head. Um, that's it for now. Um, I suggest you play around with it, uh, with the things I've explained so far. And then I uh, will uh, start using all these uh, simple principles uh, in the next lessons. Thanks for watching. Let me know uh, what you if you like this video by giving a thumbs up uh, or leaving some comments uh, in the comment section below. Thanks. And see you in the next video. Welcome to lesson number four in Learn How to Code with Python. Um, in this lesson, I will show you how you can read in a file um, and how you can write to a file. That's a very useful thing to do um, uh, because it allows you to take large pieces of text from somewhere or, or even numbers and uh, to process them and then to write them out to somewhere else. It's a very common practice. Um, in, the mean, in, in, in the process I will also introduce the concept of uh, variables and storing data uh, temporarily in it. So uh, let's dive in and uh, let's have fun. So I'm opening uh, idle again to show you. And uh, before we go in there, I'll show you that I have um, just copied some lorem ipsum text, some <coughs> old Latin text that is usually used to fill up um, some layouts of websites that are being designed. Um, so here's the text as you can see in this document lorem-ipsum.txt uh, on my desktop. So how can we read in this file? Well in Python that's fairly easy. We use the open uh, command <clears throat> and then we type in the location of the file that we want as a string. So in this case it's on the desktop and it's called lorem ipsum dot txt. Close off the quotes and the brackets and then if we press enter let's see what returns. Well, <clears throat> as you can see, it returns not the text that's in the file. It returns what's called an object um, or a representation of an object. Um, and it says that it's, uh, uh, it says the name of the file, uh, desktop slash forward lorem ipsum dot text, uh, the mode, it's in read mode, and the encoding of the file is UTF-8. So if you want to see the text that's in it, uh, you simply use the dot .read uh, method <coughs> on the object. Um, and then it will print out all the text to the screen, as you can see. So let's say we only want to have the first line. That's also possible because it's quite a lot of text. So if you only want to have the first line, you can use the uh, read line method. And this will return only the first 
line of the document. So there we have it. Um, <clears throat> so if we want to do something with this, uh, it's it's usually a good idea to use a variable and to store the text in it. So what's a variable? A variable is just a location um, in memory of your computer where you can store stuff, text, numbers and other things. So uh, a variable can be um, anything um, like um, variable and um, is and then um, something you want to put into it so I want to put in here hello so what this does it puts the string uh, hello uh, in a location in memory and I can call this location by uh, calling the variable that I called variable. So <clears throat> if I type now variable, oh, variable, then it returns the string that I've just put in it. Um, <clears throat> variables can um, have uh, variable names can uh, can be uh, strings, uh, lower cases, um, and I believe not. Uh, uh, anything else so no add symbols no hashes no um, um, exclamation marks or no question marks uh, so their their question mark is let's say one that gives a syntax error because that's not allowed but I can have variable one is, oh, is one like so and uh, I can also have far one like so is one and then I can call it far one okay so those are variables variables are places in memory of your computer or uh, references to places in your uh, in the memory of your computer where you can store strings of text numbers other stuff that we'll get to later um, so let's put in the first line of the document into this variable or into a variable let's call it um, var2 is uh, open let's do it I don't like to type too much, so let's take it from memory. Var mm, two is open read line. There you go. So now <coughs> the first line of the text in the document has been stored into memory uh, into a location that I can reach by asking for it, typing var two. There you go. So now we've taken the text from the document and uh, now we can uh, start transforming the text or splitting the text. Let's say we want to split on commas like we've done in the lesson number two, I believe it was. Then we will just do the variable two and we'll split it on comma, enter. And then you see you get back what we call a list with uh, all the pieces of text that could be separated by commas. Um, <clears throat> so um, if we want to write, what we've done so far is uh, reading from a file, but it's also very useful to write to a file. So let's say we want to write the var2 so the first line of the document, we want to write this to a new document. Uh, to, the, to do this, uh, we have to open a new document. And um, the, f the document that we've read in, that was opened uh, in read mode. So let's go back to that. So if we just open 
the document it says here the mode here is R that's for reading so there <coughs> are different modes for opening documents you can uh, open it as we've done here with no um, indication of how we want to open it then Python just open it, opens the document in read mode um, but we can also open a document in append mode that means that we can add stuff to the document um, and we can also open it simply in writing mode and we can then if the document exists then it will be emptied and everything will be added to it anew um, and then written out um, so let's open a new document in write mode um, and let's save that um, the object that we open into um, a variable so we can reach it um, so let's say document document is open and then we'll put it on desktop again desktop dash new dot txt and then <coughs> here in single quotes we will use w for writing so this will um, instantiate a new document object that we can reach by the document variable so what can we do here if we call it document then we get here a representation of the uh, document it's in read mode and the encoding is UTF-8 and uh, the document has also been created here on the on the file system and it's empty as you can see so. so now we can write to it so how do we write the text that's in var2 to this document um, well uh, that is simply done by uh, writing it to the document like so document that's the object that we have dot write and then what we want to write to it for two. So this tells Python, the interpreter, to take everything that's in the variable to and write it to the document. Okay, so now it's written uh, 869 characters. Is that so? Or is this the location? Hmm, not sure what this is, <laughs> actually. Anyway, it's written uh, to the document but now we have to close the document to have it saved and that's done like so we do document first let's, let's see the text document it's still empty as you can see because it's not uh, written to it yet it's only in memory it's in the, in the document object here so now if we close it enter now as you can see, oh, it's bytes. <laughs> so the eight, the eight six nine here that it returns if you do document dot write, that's bytes. You can see here, it says bytes. So eight hundred sixty nine bytes have been written to the text document. So let's check. Yes, there it is. Uh, our first line from the uh, Lorem Ipsum document has been written to the new text document num agit dwi num agit dwi okay um, so this is how you read text from a document and then you can do something with it just take the first line you can do something more with it you can split it you can um, transform it any way you want um, and then write it back to another document so that's how this is done it's a very useful uh, thing to know um, so um, I'll leave it at this um, this is still part of the basics um, and um, in the next lesson um, we will uh, have a closer look at the different data types that are not only related to 
text and numbers, integers and floats, but there are other data types that you have already seen a little bit, like lists, that I will uh, explain in more detail. And after that, we can really get going and start doing some more interesting things. So um, I hope you found this useful and interesting still. And uh, let me know by giving a thumbs up and uh, leaving some uh, comments uh, in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next uh, video. Okay, this is already lesson number five in learn how to code with Python. And in this lesson, um, we will uh, wrap up with the, uh, the basics um, that you really need to know before we can uh, take the next step. And um, I will be talking uh, uh, some more again about uh, variables. We already looked at variables in the previous lesson when we were using it to store data from a file and then reading, writing it out again. Um, but there's another important connected principle and that's a um, uh, principal thing you need to know and that's data types. So what are data types? Um, you've already seen some of them uh, like the string uh, so the hello world example hello world this is a string so if we do if we use the type again that's actually the data type uh, that it asks for. Type hello world. World that gives back string. So um, and um, the type for one. I really need to learn how to type better. <laughs> type one gives int and then type. 1.0 that gives back, well, you know, float. So these are the three types that you've already seen, seen uh, string, int, and float. And what you usually see is that um, data in some form of data type is temporarily stored into a variable and then being processed and then written out to somewhere again. So that looks something like this. Uh, variable one is one. And it means <coughs> that data, in this case, the number one, uh, with the uh, data type integer is being stored in a location in memory and that's being referenced uh, by the variable with variable name var1. So var1, if I type this, then in the background the computer or the, the um, Python interpreter will uh, match this uh, uh, variable name var1 with a location in memory where the data, in this case the number one, is stored. And that's why the interpreter returns the number one. Um, strings, integers and float are um, fairly, fairly uh, simple uh, data types and, and have a very simple structure. Um, there are three other uh, data types that I want to discuss that uh, are very useful and the first one uh, you've seen also already and that's called the list. Um, and the list is, as it, as the name's name already says, it's a list of uh, variables that are combined together in uh, in a particular order. So uh, a list can uh, be something like this. Let's first uh, let's say we have the, the var one that we already have, and also we have a var two. And that's uh, the string two. So we have far one, and we have far two. Yes, um, we can put these two variables. One of them is an int, and the other one is a, a string. We can put them together into a list. 
So uh, a list is construct, and we can uh, and this well, let's first put it in list before we continue. So we can say far one and far two like this. This is a list. So the square brackets make this a list. So if I press enter, then you can see we have a list one comma string two. And, and this list can also be uh, stored into memory so we can reference it later. Uh, so we can say list one is the list of var one and var two. So this returns nothing and then later on we can call it again list one. And we have it again. <clears throat> so um, that's a list. Um, then um, what's the best thing to explain? Let's let's show um, uh, a practical usage of this. Um, let's uh, read in the document that we had. Doc, and then we'll open the document. It's on the desktop. Uh, what was it? Lorem. Oh, there it is. Oh. Lorem ipsum dot txt. So we read this in to doc. And if you want to see the first line, we just do read line. Uh, oh typo <coughs> read line so there it is um, so we've seen already the split function that we can use on um, documents uh, and that uh, returns a list and uh, I didn't uh, point it out too clearly because we, I hadn't explained lists before but now you know what a list is so let's say the doc has a list and um, so we read in the first line of the document and we will split it on a comma so it will split here and it will put this text as the first element of a list and then this of the second all the way to the next comma which is here and then you will take this one as the third etc etc so let's see what that will look like so now if we ask for the doc list mm, doc read line split comma what's going wrong here split on comma oh yes uh, the read line uh, uh, function reads in the line and then if you call again the read line it reads the next uh, line so <laughs> um, let's see how can we fix this we have to we have to close the dock and then open it again oh. So there we go. So if I just to show you, if I do doc read line again, uh, here it just uh, uh, gave back uh, a line break. This is a line break. This here. So if I do read line now, it will give the third line of the uh, document because it's third time I will call read line. So if I do read line, you see this will be the uh, third line. Let's just check. Let's show you. So this was the first line, the read line. This was the second and the third time that I called it this, this one. So if I call it again, it will give a, a blank line again. And there we go. Let's just show you while we're at it. 
read line and then again read line the next line so read line calls line after line after line um, so how will I proceed now it will give so the next time this one here this is a, a line that will come back and now I will store it into uh, memory so now if I call this line I can call it again so let's split this line line and I'll put it into line split variable uh, and I'll do line dot split <clears throat> and now line split will uh, is a variable that references a list of this line of this text that's being split by a comma so we will have a list that contains this part and this text as an element this text as an element etc so and let's have a look so line split looks like this so here you have it it does not in include the commas um, in the text uh, because it's been split on it um, so this is uh, one element this is one element and this is another element etc so let's say we want to have uh, want to print out only the first element line split and then only the first element um, the first element can be referenced by using um, square brackets and then the first element is the zero index so let's go into uh, lists and indexes a little bit further so um, if we have a list uh, like one two uh, one two three four okay then one in this case is on <coughs> on the zero index of the list two is on the first index three is on the second index and four is on the third index so list items can be called by referencing their index so their position in the in the list um, and the first item in a list is always on the zeroed index so lists are zero indexed so if I want to call just number one then I can call it by calling and referencing the zeroed index like so if I want to call number two I do the first index number three second have oh. mm. a good measure the last one number three like so okay I'll, I'll leave it at this <coughs> uh, for now uh, there's a lot more to be explained um, about uh, lists but uh, this is the most basic stuff you need to know and let's have a look at uh, some other data types that's, that are also available so we had uh, string we had int we had float and now list and then number five is the dictionary or dict and let's just give you number six uh, as well already that's the tuple is it written like this tuple <coughs> anyway so let's first look at dictionary dictionary is as the word says um, it's uh, a handy um, data structure for looking up data and a dictionary um, in Python is written like this so if you have uh, my dict variable then a dictionary is created by using curly brackets so this is a dictionary which is currently empty so if I call it my dict 
uh, the empty dictionary is being returned. Um, <coughs> a dictionary is basically a key value pair storage. So um, with the uh, list you can retrieve a single element from the list like say here uh, number four I can retrieve by referencing the position in the list with the dictionary you do not reference a position but uh, a key so what that looks like this so if I my dict two is a dictionary and then the key is a string or something else an object can can be anything uh, but let's uh, use a uh, string so um, well let's say uh, my name uh, and then that's the key and then my name is Dave so if I want to get the value Dave, um, then I can call the name on the dictionary, the key name on the dictionary. So my dict two, and I'll call the name. Then it returns Dave. So. <coughs> Um, this is a, a very handy uh, tool because you can uh, of course have many things in it like name, last name, address um, and then you can quickly get someone's address just by going to my dict and then address and then it returns the address so um, this is um, very useful um, if you want to quickly retrieve data instead of when you you could also store this of course in a list you could do um, um, my list uh, is and then you could say Dave yes and then you could say okay the, the zero index is always Dave but it's much more easy to say okay I want to get the name so I call the key name and then you get the um, the name back of the the value back uh, that's stored on their name um, again also here there's a lot more to say about dictionaries um, how to use them when to use them um, but this is um, just a, a short explanation uh, of what a dictionary is then the last thing uh, to finish up uh, I want to show you is a tuple um, and the tuple is kind of like a list but not quite um, um, so let's create a tuple and then I'll start explaining uh, tuple is it tuple p? Mm, anyway <laughs> tuple and a tuple instead of like the list that's being created with square brackets you create a tuple using round brackets 1 comma 2 comma 3 and it's similar to a list in the sense that you can access the positions the values in the positions uh, like if I want to get the number one I can do my tuple um, 0 like so and then I get back 1 <clears throat> However, there is a difference between tuples and uh, lists, and that's um, list can be altered, and tuples cannot be altered. In uh, fancy terms, we would say uh, lists are mutable and tuples are immutable. Uh, also, I, I won't go into uh, all the details about this uh, in this lesson, um, but just to recap. What, what do we have as data types? We have uh, floats, uh, integers. Well, let's and uh, let's start with string. We have the string. We have integer. We have oh, float. We have um, 
this guy integer uh, string integer float list um, dictionaries and tuples so these are the six basic data types that you will come across when uh, using um, when, when programming in general but especially in Python um, that's it for now this was uh, lesson number five I hope you uh, like this uh, lesson and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson thanks for watching hi there and welcome to lesson number six in the series learn how to code with Python um, up till this point um, I've shown you some basic principles in, of coding and I've showed them uh, while using Python and in this lesson um, we will go into some specific Python um, things that you need to know um, for instance uh, where the, the place where we type the, the Python commands um, is called the interpreter sometimes I've called it engine or something else but um, in general it's called the interpreter it interprets um, what you type and then processes it in the Python interpreter and gives you back um, something or it processes something and gives you something back in the console um, on up to this point we have not used any um, uh, extensions uh, to the Python library uh, so let me explain uh, how this works there is something which is called the standard library so <clears throat> there are many uh, pre-set um, functions uh, that uh, you can use that are already built into uh, the Python uh, interpreter uh, but they're not loaded by default you need to import them if you want to use them um, so to give an uh, example, um, if you want to work with the with the things with the OS, you can do, for instance, an import by typing import OS, and that will load the OS module. This is uh, part of the standard library, so it's you don't have to uh, install anything extra for it. When you install Python, this is already included among many other uh, libraries so um, once you have imported a library you can start to use it um, and by ins for instance you can see if um, uh, a file exists uh, for instance so you can do OS that's part of the OS library OS and then uh, path exists so your path and then you can do is file for instance is file and then you can type the path of a file and then if <clears throat> if it's a file it will be returned so um, let's see what do I have here on my desktop the lorem ipsum that's a file so uh, if we say um, desktop dash um, lorem ipsum text there we go oh. lorem ipsum dot txt this is a file so if I press enter now then uh, it should return true so there you have it uh, now I've confirmed that this file exists and that it is uh, actually a file so that's one of the functions that is already built in on uh, in the OS uh, module so there are many uh, more uh, modules um, if you press um, F1 while you're in the console in the idle console then the uh, help page should open F1 there we go I have to be in it. F1. Let's 
go and see go to help python docs control h it says that works for me as well <coughs> um, so control h brings you to the uh, python documentation uh, where you can find uh, all the tools uh, that are already built in uh, library reference and there's building functions uh, these are building functions that you can call without um, importing uh, uh, modules so we've already used for instance the sum function there we go sum function you can read up here about it so if you go back so let's talk a little bit more about uh, modules that you can import um, if you want to see which models are available you can um, press ctrl H from within the um, console the idle console and then um, it will open the uh, Python documentation of your version in the browser in your default browser um, here you can find uh, uh, and look up all kinds of things about uh, Python uh, like the history and license of Python uh, etc uh, I suggest you uh, take a look at that um, but at the right hand corner there's a, a modules link so if you click there you will go to a list that lists well all the um, modules that are included in uh, in Python in standard library so if we scroll down to the O then here we will see OS and OS path that's the one that we've uh, used before uh, so you can click through there and you can look up what's available uh, how it works and um, it's it's uh, it's quite extensive um, and most of them you will not uh, use immediately but um, over time you will uh, learn most uh, the most important ones um, so that's um, where you can look up all the modules that are available and uh, I suggest you take a look at that um, and, uh, if you are working on um, I wanted to explain you about the standard library and uh, I wanted to show you uh, some examples of how to use it and um, I wanted to uh, show you some overview so I had to look up in the documentation the standard library um, and then I came across a brief tour of the standard library I'll uh, add this link to the to the description uh, of this video so you can look it up yourself and here you see some examples of what's available so we've already seen import OS and then with os.getcwd means uh, current working directory how it says here it will show you in which directory you are so if we try this ourselves in um, the console that we have open so we have already imported uh, os and if we do os.getc get current working directory then it will show me show you my home directory so that's uh, where we are currently at um, <coughs> so let's see what else they have dear OS returns a list of all modules yes that's also interesting to show you if you go if you use the dear command on a module it will show you all the available um, uh, functions that are under it so let's walk through this quickly so we've like for instance the change dear command chmod command change uh, dear command is to change the uh, directory so if we do os dot change dear and then um, let's go to um, the desktop for instance desktop uh, desktop desk And then if we check for the current working directory, we are at the desktop. So from within Python, you can um, <coughs> manage your operating system or the file system uh, with this module. 
Um, okay, so if you, I, I think you should um, research the documentation yourself and see what's available. We will get to uh, more of the modules uh, at a later point. Um, and for now, um, one of the specific things about Python is also that um, Python uses code indentation. So let me show you that. So I want to show you about code indentation. That's uh, something that's typically something for Python, which makes it different from other programming languages. Um, and uh, so I thought I'd just show you some some of my code uh, so you can get a feel for it and understand what I mean. Um, and at the same time, you can also see how the import uh, of modules uh, uh, looks what it looks like. So uh, this is a piece of code that I've written. Uh, it's for a, for a website. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, some libraries are being imported, like for instance here the regular expression library, which is uh, part of the standard library uh, math uh, for doing mathematical operations, iter tools for uh, the time module, etc. etc. Um, so that's uh, what the imports uh, look like. And <clears throat> the indentation is what you see here. So instead of uh, using um, brackets, what you see in some um, programming languages like um, um, yeah, well, brackets like this, um, Python uses indentation. And <clears throat> so if we go to the next line here, uh, let's say we, we define something um, like a function function x and then um, instead of doing uh, what you do in some languages uh, you do like this and then you start typing something uh, and at the same time you could also define it like this and then usually they have a semicolon to <coughs> say this is the end of the, of the statement um, Python doesn't use all these semicolons and uh, brackets. Uh, it just uses new lines to uh, and, and the indentation, which means the the, um, the tabs. Or actually, these are not tabs; these uh, are um, spaces. Uh, in this case, uh, four spaces is one tab, and another tab is again four spaces. So. Um, and this g gives a, a clear view of how a program is structured. So <clears throat> it's very easy to see uh, where this if statement ends. It ends here. Well, if you have, um, if you use um, brackets and semicolons, you can also uh, make your uh, code look like this. But you don't have to to make it work. And because Python makes you um, format your code like this, it makes it uh, very clearly readable. And uh, there's no other way to do it. And that's uh, very specific for Python. So especially if you're a beginner and, um, and, and you really have to program it like this, um, <clears throat> then, um, then you make your code uh, very clear from the start. Well, if you can do it in a different way, and your code still runs, then you will learn some, probably some bad habits. So that's a nice thing um, and a very specific thing about uh, of, uh, of Python. Um, another thing that's very typical of Python is um, that it's uh, an, an what they, what we call a dynamically typed and strongly typed language. Well, what does that mean? Let's have a look at that. Um, so, um, dynamically typed language means that um, if you set a variable, it will only be evaluated at runtime. So, 
um, I can say for instance a is 1 and then at runtime the interpreter um, decides that a must be an integer so I don't have to specify beforehand like you have to do in some languages that you have to say int a that you have to say okay I want a to be an integer please reserve some uh, integer space in the memory uh, now you don't have to do this before so when the program compiles um, because Python is an interpreted languages language and uh, so at the time that mm, that the code runs when it comes to a is 1 uh, at that moment the interpreter will interpret a as an integer because uh, it's uh, reference to 1 which is an integer uh, so that's dynamically uh, typed but at the same time it is strongly typed and what that means is that if you have a is 1 and you have b is uh, a string 2 if I do a plus b it will give an error because the I cannot do um, addition with uh, a string and an integer um, well in some languages like JavaScript for instance um, if you do this then the one will be uh, transformed in the background from a integer to a string and then uh, the result will be a string of 1, 2, like so. Um, but this can give some, some unforeseen uh, um, uh, bugs uh, easily if you don't know what you're doing because without you explicitly uh, saying that <coughs> uh, a has to be transformed to a, a string the interpreter is transforming it then so Python doesn't do that if you want to add uh, these up um, you go, you have to explicitly say that one has to be uh, become a string so uh, that's the a variable so you have to do string a so we cast it to a string, that's what it's called, and then we do plus b, then this will give the result 1, 2. So that's strongly typed and dynamically uh, typed. So dynamically typed, to recap, means that at runtime um, the variable uh, type will be uh, evaluated, and strongly typed means that you, if you, that the type of the variable will not be changed in the background um, uh, to, f to fit some, some purpose. Uh, you have to explicitly uh, do this. Um, let me see what else did I want to say about the specifics of Python. Um, yeah, one of the things that I like about Python um, is this clarity that uh, the, the dynamically uh, tightness gives a lot of freedom while the strongly type uh, behavior of, uh, of Python makes it that you don't introduce uh, silly bugs um, and the indentation makes it makes the code uh, very readable um, so those are two very um, good things that I like about uh, Python and um, What's, what I also like about Python is the, um, the way of thinking about how to code and um, I will introduce you now to the Zen of um, Python which is our 10, now 20 lines um, statements um, that might not make too much sense at this time but if you are programming for some time you should read this again and then um, it will make some sense and I will highlight a few uh, of the statements uh, you can read the, the Zen of Python by import by typing import this it's a kind of Easter egg in the interpreter and then you see this Zen of Python well I'm not gonna read through all of them but uh, the ones that I do like is uh, readability counts 
So and that has a lot to do with uh, the same philosophy that's behind the indentation. So uh, it's more important to have readable code than have really condensed code. Sometimes you want to write codes that's short, but uh, if this means that readability becomes less, then it's better not to do this. Uh, and I like that one very much. Um, in the same way, there should be only, and there should be one, and preferably, preferably only one obvious way to do it. Um, so, um, if you're writing code all by yourself, um, you might figure out your own ways of doing stuff. But if you write code in a team, this becomes uh, very critical. That uh, it makes it easy for uh, uh, to have one way of working that everyone follows. Um, and the, the line beneath that is also interesting to me personally because I'm Dutch. So it says there, although that way may not be obvious at first, unless you're Dutch. Um, it's a reference uh, probably to the creator of uh, Python, uh, Guido van, uh, van Rossum, uh, who's also Dutch. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting way of looking at the world. <laughs> so. Um, I suggest uh, from time to time while you're programming you read through uh, these uh, statements and uh, it will become more clear to you um, what they mean and uh, you will start to understand the deepness uh, of it. Okay, so um, this was uh, about Python um, and what, it, what makes it different from other programming languages and um, I hope you found this interesting. Um, if you did, um, please leave uh, a comment uh, below and uh, give it a thumbs up, this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so welcome to lesson number seven. And in this lesson, uh, I will explain you about flow control. That's um, what makes your program make decisions. And um, it's um, fairly uh, simple to understand. Um, and I'll show you some examples. Um, uh, let's first open uh, a file. So we, we will stop working with uh, the console directly and we'll start working in a file that's uh, a little bit more convenient. So we go to file and a new file and then this opens uh, uh, a file that we can edit. So I'm gonna save it for now, save as um, Let's call it just uh, flow control py save. Okay. Um, so flow is all about doing something when something happens and doing something else when something else happens. So this can be easily done um, with if and else statements. Uh, and it looks like this. So um, we can, for instance, have a variable a, which is set to the number one. And then uh, we can write if a is bigger than two, then print something. So we can say uh, a is bigger than two. And if this is not the case, else, then we'll print uh, a is not bigger, a is not bigger than, than 2. Okay, so um, let's run the script, and we can do so by uh, pressing F5. And it asks if the script must be saved. Yes. And then a is not bigger than two. That's what it writes. I'm going to put this on the right hand side and this one on the left hand side. So it's easier for you to see how it relates. So, um, so if we change a in the script to three, then it should print um, a is bigger than two. Well, let's see. Mm, F5. There we go. A is bigger than 2. Um, so this is a very, a very simple beginning. 
Um, but you can also uh, add um, some more uh, possibilities. So if A is bigger than 2, we want to print A is bigger than 2. And then we can uh, do what is called an LIF. So we can do another if statement saying if the first if statement was not true, then evaluate the second if statement, which is the LIF. LIF A is let's say smaller than zero, then we print A is smaller than zero, yes, and if that's not the case, then if nothing else is uh, uh, could be uh, checked, then we print uh, A is not bigger than two, which in this case should be is not bigger than two and not smaller than zero or in other words it's between zero and two so if we run this uh, we will still get the same answer it's bigger than two just to show you f5 save a is bigger than two um, so let's talk also um, a little bit more about how you can uh, make comparisons in these if statements so you can do if a is bigger than 2 but you could also say if a is bigger or equal than 2 so that uh, this would evaluate to true if um, if a is 2 or 2.1 2.3 etc um, but we could also say, let's just delete everything here, we could also use a, a negative uh, expression. So we could say if A is not 3, then we will print, oh, we will print something, print 1. Um, so the excla excla explanation, exclamation mark <laughs> is, um, is a negative, uh, yes, and at the same way, uh, if we want to do a comparison, we do double is sign. So he here, one <coughs> um, comparison sign, uh, or no, one um, um, is sign. Uh, means uh, assign the value of 3 to the variable a mm -hmm. but if we want to check if something is true if a really is 3 then we have to do double signs because if we would do like this it would be assigning so if I would run this we would get an error Let's, let me show you this it says invalid syntax Yeah because this is not correct syntax. Uh, you cannot set a value to a variable in an if statement. You can only compare. Um, so just to show you that a is 3 evaluates to uh, true or false, we could uh, write something like uh, a is 3. Yeah, so we've set a to 3 in the console and then a double is sign 3 so that's a comparison that's checking if a is actually 3 if this is true then it will say true else it will say false so here it says true which means this if statement here would evaluate to true so this is true we could also say if true print 1 or if a is 3 print 1 so if we run this it will print 1 to the console Um, yes, so <clears throat> if statements um, um, compare um, to boolean uh, value, compare boole see if boolean values are either true or false, and if true, it will do what's in the if statement below, uh, else it will skip it. So. Um, 
let me see what else I wanted to say about this um, yes we can also um, see um, if a value is part of a list of values for instance so uh, let's say we have um, that a is not a value but it's a list of different values like 1 comma 2 comma 3 and then we want to see if uh, 5 if this is in the list of values if it's in there we want to print out uh, 1 else not so if we run this f5 it does not say anything here below um, but if we check if 3 is in the list then that should evaluate to true and print 1 let's run that and there you have it it prints 1 so you can check <coughs> uh, for values in a list uh, or you can check if um, a variable has a certain value um, and then based on that do a, a certain action so that's flow control uh, or at least uh, the beginning of flow control and um, I hope you uh, like this uh, lesson if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and um, uh, write uh, some comments if you have some questions uh, or want to see some some more uh, about flow control and uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video hi this is uh, lesson number eight and uh, of the mini course uh, learn how to code with python um, and in lesson number eight we will look at uh, looping uh, one of the powers of computers is that it can uh, do the same task over and over again with high precision much more than uh, human beings uh, could ever do um, and one of the constructs to um, to make this happen in a computer is by uh, initiating what's called a loop so let's see how you can do this in uh, Python um, basically in Python there are two kinds of loops there's uh, the for loop and the while loop um, so if you want to um, let's start with the while loop um, which is uh, most simple and uh, for instance you can continuously without ever stopping um, let the computer do something uh, by saying while something is true so maybe just true print 1 to the console so if you run this uh, Python will print out uh, the number 1 to the console continuously with ever stopping until we stop the program so if we run this by pressing F5 it will continuously run and run and run and run and run until we press Ctrl C and uh, we've interrupted the program and it will stop so this is um, one of the powers of uh, loops but uh, it's also uh, one of the um, trickiest things of loops is that it can go on forever and ever without stopping and um, um, sometimes if you're programming uh, and, and making uh, some very complex programs you might introduce something that's called the indefinite loop um, so without in, um, having the intention the program will continuously do something and get back and then do something again and get back and do something again um, and which eventually might even crash a computer if, uh, if it eats all the resources um, but for now um, let's say loops are very useful um, and we could well, um, make the loop uh, not in indefinite by um, using flow control so we can um, introduce what's called a counter in a while loop so for instance we can set the variable count to zero 
and then we can say while uh, the variable count is less than 10 so that's similar to the if statement so while uh, the the variable count is less than 10 we want to print out the count itself so print out count um, so if we run this it will again uh, forever print out the count which is zero so what we want to do after printing it out is uh, adding one uh, to the count so we do count is count plus one so after having printed the count it will add one to the count and then it will go back it will check again to see what the count is which is it's one and then it's two and then three until it's ten and then it will not uh, <coughs> will get out of the loop so let's run this and see what it uh, does so it prints out the first count until uh, nine so let's see why only it prints out until 9 um, so let's say the count is 9 at this time it's still less than 10 and it prints out 9 and then here the count becomes 10 and then when it checks here count is 10 which is uh, uh, less than it's not less than 10 because it is 10 and then it will stop and it will not execute the print statement and will not add anything and then it will continue one line lower so to show you that actually after the while loop it breaks out and it uh, continues uh, I will put another print statement here and we will call this end so after the while loop uh, has finished it will continue with the script and do whatever is there um, and it will print out end so if I run it again it prints out 0 to 9 and then end so that's the while loop um, another useful uh, looping mechanism mechanism is the uh, for loop and it's particularly handy to loop over a list of values so you can say for instance for uh, a number in a list of numbers let's say one two three four five print out that number yes so what this will do um, as you might guess it will print out uh, number one two three four five and then it will continue on the next line and it will print end so let's run this so one two three four five and then end so a for loop is very handy to loop over a list of values and then do something with those values so those were the for loop and the while loop um, both very useful um, looping constructs that uh, let you op um, do operations uh, for a certain amount of times or indefinite times um, i hope you like this lesson uh, it, i am sure it's very useful to know this um, let me know in the comments below uh, what you think about it and if you liked the video give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next lesson so welcome to lesson number nine uh, in the mini course learn how to program with Python and in this lesson uh, you will look into um, functions um, but first let's do a little recap um, because in functions we bring everything uh, together and structure our code um, but let's look at what we've mm, done so far so I've spoken about and explained about variables uh, what uh, how they work and um, what they look like um, 
We've talked about data types, the strings, the ints, the floats, lists, dictionaries, and tuples. Um, I've told you about uh, Python specifics, uh, like the interpreter, the standard library, where you can find uh, uh, some more modules and import, uh, and import them and have uh, extended functionality. Uh, I've uh, explained that um, Python is a dynamically and strongly typed language, so you should know what that means by now and um, um, what that um, <coughs> will do for you. Um, we've spoken about flow control, uh, making programs um, make decisions, um, and uh, we've used comparisons in these uh, decisions made by if statements. So we've compared bigger than, smaller, or bigger, smaller, um, the not, the negative uh, comparison, and uh, the is equal comparison, and the in to check if a value is part of uh, some other set of values. Uh, and then finally we've looked at uh, how you can make the program uh, do repetitive actions with looping, the while loop and the for loop. So um, until this point we've written code um, in a very scripting uh, kind of way. So um, the Python interpreter starts at the top of the script that you've written and then line by line it interprets uh, the uh, commands and um, process them one by one. Um, and what functions allow you to do is to capture uh, and group together uh, a set of commands um, that have a specific function. So um, in Python a function is created by using the def keyword for define. Um, so I can define a function that uh, I want to loop 10 times, that's how I will call it. So I give it a name, loop 10 times, and then um, we use uh, opening and closing brackets, uh, and we can uh, continue with a colon and then press enter. And then I can say, okay, I want to make a function that loops 10 times and prints something out. So I can do, uh, I can set a count again. So the same code we had before, count 10, count is 10. And then we say while count is less than 10, we will print the count. like so and so we have grouped this code that we had before now together and put it into a function so if we run this let's see what will happen and nothing happens and that is because we have not yet called the function so we have created the function and uh, to make this function execute we have to call it uh, like this so we do loop 10 times and like this we call it so we've first created a function in which we put um, some code that we want to be executed and at the end of the script we will call it and now it should print out 0 to 9 so let's uh, have a look at that save and okay so I actually made a, a small uh, mistake in in the code here um, that happens and uh, that's the nice thing about the uh, Python um, interpreter it uh, immediately gives you feedback and you can uh, see what uh, that that what you've written doesn't work and you can fix it so what I had here was count 10 and of course if, if the starting count is 10 then it's never smaller than 10 so it will not print anything so let's um, remove the um, the calling of the uh, uh, loop 
um, of the function loop 10 times and set the count to 0, the starting count and then if we run this, uh, as you will see, it will not print out anything because we haven't called it and then if we call it loop 10 times and then run it Ah, and uh, again, we made I made a mistake. <laughs> and so uh, we we've created the indefinite loop um, because we didn't add uh, another one um, to the count. So count is count plus one. So this time. Uh, we should have a properly working function that counts from 0 to 9 and we call it with the loop 10 times uh, call so let's run it now and there we have it so um, the nice thing uh, about creating functions is that with the same code you can uh, make um, different things happen uh, by simply uh, changing uh, the parameters that you will give to uh, a function because a, param uh, a function can take parameters uh, so let me explain this uh, so let's say we do not want to loop 10 times but we want to loop x times mm, like so and then we can give here uh, x as a parameter and then at the while count we replace the 10 with x um, then it should uh, run x times if we give the parameter here so let's say we want to have it run 20 times we can say loop x times and then we give the parameter value of 20 so what will happen is 20 will be given to x so the comparison count will be compared to the value that's in x in this case it's 20 so if we run this you can see that it runs from 0 to 19 which is 20 times just to show you how this can be changed we can make it run only one time it will only print out 0 and we have 0 but we can also have it print out 10,000 times or maybe 1,100 just to keep it uh, short and you see it will print until 99 so that's one of the great benefits uh, of um, writing functions functions make it possible for you to reuse your code um, and you can give parameters to a function so it will behave slightly different but with the same logic another um, great thing about uh, writing your code in functions is that you can organize your code you can imagine um, having like uh, 10,000 lines of code in a program and if you do not uh, group your code into functions it will be really difficult to uh, to understand your code um, so by writing functions you can group code that does some specific thing you can group it together and you give it a, a name uh, that you can understand like loop 10 times or loop x times that tells me that <clears throat> if I call this okay something will loop x times so I don't have to uh, read the code and see what it does I can just read the name of the function and I can understand what it does um, if it's a very complex function you can uh, also write what is called a doc string um, so r uh, immediately under the function name you can use triple uh, quotes and then again triple quotes I usually do it like so and then here you can write something about the function you can write um, something like this function uh, this function takes a value and loops uh, as many times 
items as the value indicates. So, so uh, this will not interfere with the program, what's between the triple commas, uh, but if someone is reading through the code, uh, they can read here and see um, what, uh, the, what the function does. So just to show you that it does not interfere, I will call it again. And you see it just runs and does not print anything to the screen. So that's the basic um, structure of f uh, function. Um, it's uh, very useful. Um, and by now, I think you have all the knowledge to build some very complex uh, programs. And in the next lesson, I will um, talk a little bit more about what you can do and, and how you should go about it. Um, and maybe give you some examples to get you started. So I hope you like this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson. So and welcome to lesson number 10 in learn how to code with Python. And in lesson number 9 I already said that by now you have all the skills that you need to uh, build something useful. And uh, in this lesson I will uh, see if I can show you um, something interesting that you can build yourself with all the knowledge you have. And um, as an example, I will show you how to get some data from Yahoo Finance and store it on your machine for later usage. So to show this, um, I've opened the Yahoo Finance page on the S&P 500 um, historical data tab. And uh, on this tab, um, you see all the prices of the last uh, few months and you can download this data. So you can download this just by clicking it, it will download it to your uh, file system and then you can use it. Um, this is how you would do it manually, but I will show you how to do this um, with, uh, with the Python script. So um, let's click on the link and to get it, we'll copy it and then go to the script editor and what I uh, will do first I will say the URL that I've just copied is this one closing the quotes and then to download um, data from this URL we will need to import a library and uh, that is the URL lib library and dot request oh, and dot re no, dot request um, you can look up which libraries uh, do what by going to the uh, documentation uh, let me show you uh, you can go to python docs it will open in the browser the python documentation and then you can go to modules and you see all the modules of course you need to know which one you should use and uh, I will probably make some videos about uh, some useful libraries uh, for you to use and in this case I'm showing you to use uh, the URL lib library which is down here at the U URL lib we're using the request library and here you can read uh, what it does um, but I will show you what it does um, and how you can use it uh, in the most simple way. So we will save the data uh, to a variable, store the data to a variable, and we will do this by calling URL lib dot request dot URL open, and then we will open the URL. So this will create a object of the uh, call to the URL and store it in the data. So if you run this, uh, it will not show you anything, but let's just see if it runs. Yes, no errors, so everything is fine. Um, so let's see what we've what we have taken from the uh, from the web. Um, 
by printing it out we will print out the data oh, data let's see what that there what this does okay so <clears throat> it prints out the string representation of a uh, request for response uh, yes so that's not very useful so we do not want to have the string representation of the request we want to have the value that's in it and so we need to read it so we need to read the data and that's done by the read function calling read on data so we will read the data and this will be printed out so now I expect a whole list of data to be shown on the screen let's see if that's correct and there you have it that's data from Yahoo with the date open high low close okay so far so good <clears throat> now let's um, structure this um, this code a little bit and also add uh, the functionality that we will write it to a file uh, so let's first implement the writing to the file <clears throat> so to do this we will uh, instantiate a document by doing open and then um, this is uh, let's say Yahoo Finance and dot CSV it's a comma separated <coughs> data um, and we will make it writable yes um, so this opens or instantiates um, an object with uh, a file on the file system and now we will write the data to this file uh, which we will do like so we will do doc.write data.read and then we close the document doc dot close so we don't need the print statement anymore um, I could delete the print statement but using the hash I can also comment it out and um, it will not be executed but only readable for me so let's put the code a little bit close together <coughs> in one block so let's run this first and see um, if we uh, indeed have a, a file that's called Yahoo Finance and that the data is in there so let's run it type error write argument must be string not bytes okay so we have to data.read and we make it a string uh, yes Let's run it again. Okay, let's see. Um, the home, my home folder. Do we have a file here? Yahoo Finance. Yes, here it is. And let's open it. Let's open it in a text editor. And there we have it. Okay, this is not the way I expected it to be. Let's see if we can open this in uh, LibreOffice. No. Let's do it differently. So let's read it line by line. Yes, let's comment this out. Let's not write um, to the document. But let's read this document in a loop line by line. So <clears throat> let's say uh, for each line in data dot read lines you haven't seen this before but the read lines will uh, read in from uh, the request that's been uh, handled and it will uh, read it into a dictionary so if we print here the line 
then it will read the data line by line and we will print it out so let's check this first yes there we have it um, we see that it has uh, new lines so we can uh, get rid of these uh, new line symbols by stripping um, stripping it um, dot uh, strip let's run again okay so there's no new lines anymore and uh, what I also notice is that the data is in byte format so it's printed out and we can see it but the, the B here means that it's byte <coughs> so it's binary form and not um, in um, string form so let's see if we can cast it to a string So I had to figure out what uh, what was going on here, and um, um, in order to um, get the uh, data type transformed to actual text uh, of the data, we have to decode it. Um, that's something I hadn't seen before. Uh, <clears throat> so um, that can be done by uh, using the decode uh, method. Uh, decode to UTF-8 like so um, so now what we've done here is we go through the data line by line and uh, we strip uh, all the new lines from it and then we decode the line which is uh, in byte form and we decode it to UTF-8 so then it becomes uh, text so let's uh, check this And as you can see now, it's uh, just text. So um, actually, we don't need to uh, go through the code line by line. So let's comment that out. And let's go back to our previous uh, setup. Uh, hope you're still with me. Uh, so here we have the data that we read in. And instead of casting it to a string, we need to decode it. So we do not decode it, but we so we do not cast to string, but we decode it. So this should write to Yahoo Finance the string of what's in the data. So we read it, we decode it, and then we close the file uh, and we take it from the URL. So um, let's run this again. Okay. So that doesn't give any output, but now this file should have properly formatted data. So it's a comma separated file now with uh, the date, open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted close. Let's see if we can open this in uh, LibreOffice. And it looks like everything's okay, comma separated. Here we go. So we've pulled the data. So um, one of the things that computers and programs are good at is uh, doing this repetitively. So because you might say oh, it's easier to just download it manually and then um, um, and then open it in uh, in Excel or in LibreOffice. Don't save. Okay. But what we can do now, we can make a function of this. Let's first get rid of code that we don't need and this function we can use for maybe other symbols now we're pulling uh, this symbol uh, but we could also uh, make a function that we could just give the symbol and then pull the data and that can be done easily um, like so so we do the define uh, function we can call it uh, get 
it, uh, wait a second, get data, and then use a ticker symbol as the argument, and then we indent this code, like so. And then if we call this um, get data, oh, and uh, then we have the same situation as before. So let's <coughs> um, change this a little bit. Let's say we want to get um, apple, for instance, and then this sticker needs to be replaced here. So here we will uh, use the format function on text. So we use the, re the placeholder, the opening and closing of the curly brackets. And then at the end we do oh, dot .format and then we say ticker. Let's go back. Oh, there we go. So now if we run this, it will get the data from Apple. Maybe we should change our code a little bit uh, because now we store it to this file, yahoofinance.csv and make this um, maybe yahoofinance finance underscore and then the ticker symbol dot format and we do ticker <clears throat> so now we have a function that pulls data from yahoo finance and saves it to a csv file with the ticker name in the in the file um, name so let's run this let's see if we get this file and if everything is okay okay uh, Okay, it gives a 404. Did I have a wrong ticker? I think so. Apple is a. Oh, let's see. Let's look up Apple. Um, let's do. Yeah. PL. Maybe it uh, has to be capitalized specifically. AAPL. Let's run this. Not found. Let's print out the URL to see what's. Uh, we made a mistake somewhere. Okay. APL. Oh, let me, uh, I see we have the the carrot symbol uh, in it, and that's still part of the SMP 500 um, ticker symbol. So this needs to be removed. So if we do run it like this, it will it should work. So uh, let's run it. And there you have it, no errors. Let's see, we have the file. We have here Yahoo Finance AAPL. Let's look at it. And there we have it. Uh, is this different from the other one? Yes, it's different. <coughs> so here we have um, an example of, uh, of a function. Um, that can be called and um, get the data from uh, Yahoo Finance. Um, to elaborate on this, we could also call this repetitively, this function, uh, by looping over a list of uh, symbols that we want to fetch. So let's do this for the ticker in tickers. Get the data for <coughs> the ticker, and then let's make a list of tickers. So the tickers. Oh, 
our AABL. Uh, IBM, I believe, is a ticker like so. And what else do we like? <coughs> um, Samsung, maybe, or uh, the Boston Beer Company, company Sam. Let's do that. Sam. So let's see if this work. We should have uh, one, two, three files being created, and let's run it. No errors. Let's see, we have the files. We have IBM, Sam, and Apple we already had. So let's look at Sam. What kind of data is that? Okay, there you have it. So this is uh, a way uh, to do some something useful like pulling uh, data from Yahoo Finance and store it on your computer so you can use it later. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Um, if you did, please leave a thumbs up and uh, leave some comments. And uh, thank you for watching and see you uh, in another video.